My name is Ulrika Hedlund. I'm the founder of Storials and Business Productivity. For those of you who have seen my videos, you know that I'm passionate about using technology to work smarter and increase productivity. A very important aspect of being productive is taking notes. So some of you might have seen the videos that I've done before on taking notes in OneNote on a Surface device versus an Apple iPad device. Well, now we're gonna do the same. So this is a two-day conference. This is the Microsoft Ignite Dubai conference. So day one, I'll be taking notes on the iPad Pro 2018. And on day two, I'll be taking notes on the Surface Pro 6. And then I'll compare my experience and share it with you. So let's start with day one. This third generation of the iPad Pro was launched by Apple in 2018. It comes in two sizes, 11 inches and 12.9 inches. I have the larger one, which is 12.9. It's a really nice device with an edge-to-edge -edge display. There is a smart keyboard that you can get to your iPad Pro, but unfortunately, I don't have one. This iPad comes with a different charger than the previous one, a so-called USB-C charger. There are a lot of benefits with this new charger. For one, it's an industry standard, unlike the previous Lightning connector, which is Apple's own proprietary technology. It can carry more power, so it's faster to charge, and it can also transfer data quicker. The annoying thing, of course, is that you have to get new connectors if you want to connect your iPad to a projector or external display. Something that's important to note is that this device doesn't have an audio jack, so to connect a headset, you need to use a wireless one. There's no home button. You use your finger to swipe and to switch between apps. There's a little bar at the bottom that shows where to swipe, which is quite useful. There's a new pen to the iPad Pro. Unlike the previous Apple Pen that was completely round, this second generation Apple Pen has a flat side and it's a bit shorter. I find it more comfortable to hold and write with. The best thing with this pen is that you charge it and pair it by just attaching it with a magnet to the side of the iPad. The previous pen, you had to charge by plugging it into the lightning connector, which was really inconvenient, especially if you wanted to charge the pen on the go. Taking notes in OneNote on the iPad Pro is a really great experience. It's quick to get started, the pen is comfortable to hold, and the writing experience is really pleasant. The OneNote app has been updated, so it now has the Insert Space tool that you can use both to insert space and remove space in your notes. I use this a lot in combination with the Lasso tool to rearrange my notes. One annoying thing with OneNote on the iPad is that you always have to have the Draw tab marked and the pen selected to be able to write. If you've been doing something else, like taking a picture for instance, the pen won't work unless you go back and select the Draw tab in the pen again. With the iPad Pro, you can't erase using the tip of the pen. What you can do, however, with this second generation of the Apple Pen, is to double tap to switch between the pen and the eraser. It's not that intuitive, and it takes some getting used to, but it's faster than switching between the tabs manually. The iPad Pro takes really great pictures, you can select between whiteboard, document, and photo. If you select document, the image is automatically cropped for you, which is really convenient if you're taking photos during presentations. The battery of the iPad Pro lasts really long. I could use it in every session for the full day without having to worry about battery life. This sixth generation of the Surface Pro was launched by Microsoft in 2018. It's a two-in-one device, meaning that it functions as a touchscreen tablet, but also a full-blown Windows computer with an optional detachable keyboard. Here, I have a gray so-called type cover. The keyboard has really improved over the years, and now it's really comfortable to type on. The Surface 6 has multiple ports, a mini display port, a USB Type A port, a micro SD card reader, and on the other side, a 3.5 mm headphone jack. The Surface Pro only comes in one size with a 12.3 inch display. 
If you want to use the Surface Pro as a normal computer, you can just open the kickstand. The kickstand can be opened to a really wide angle on the Surface Pro, which is great if you want to write something on the screen while you're typing. Surface Pro comes pre-installed with Windows 10, so you can use all your normal productivity applications on it like you're used to. The Surface Pen is sold separately. It's now in its fourth generation. This version was released in 2017. It's a bit thicker than the Apple Pen, and it has a softer tip. It also has a built-in magnet so that you can easily attach it to the Surface device when you're not using it. The beauty with the Surface Pen is that you can easily switch between writing and erasing with the back of the pen, just like you would with a normal pencil. You don't have to worry about charging the Surface Pen. It comes with standard A4 batteries. The pen works right away, even without pairing it with your device. If you do pair it, however, going through the Bluetooth settings in Windows, you get additional functionality. For instance, you can choose to launch the OneNote 2016 application by pressing the button. You can open the OneNote app by pressing and holding the button and have something happen when you double press. For instance, insert a screenshot to OneNote 2016. Since the Surface Pro is a full-blown Windows computer, you can select between the desktop application of OneNote, OneNote 2016, or the Windows 10 version of OneNote. Microsoft has discontinued the development of the desktop version of OneNote, so there's no OneNote 2019. However, OneNote 2016 is still available and supported, but they're encouraging users to move to the Windows 10 OneNote app. Luckily, Microsoft are adding a lot more functionality into the OneNote for Windows app. The writing experience in OneNote on the Surface Pro is good. You can choose between a wide selection of different colors and ink thickness. Again, being able to erase with the back of the pen and then quickly get back to writing is a key benefit when taking notes. When you're writing in the OneNote Windows app, the cursor appears, which is really annoying. But if you just go to the pen settings and unmark to show the cursor, it doesn't appear and you have a much better writing experience. The camera on the Surface Pro is not at all as good as the one in the iPad Pro. You can't zoom and you don't have the option of selecting between whiteboard, document or photo. The pictures don't come out clear at all and the whole experience of inserting photos into OneNote is a bit clunky. The OneNote app for Windows is, at this point in time, a bit more advanced than the iOS version. In the OneNote Windows app, you can create section groups to get one more hierarchy with sections grouped together, create your own custom tags, and insert meeting details from Outlook, which is a great time saver for taking meeting notes. Even though there are multiple ways to conserve the battery, it's just the fact that the battery life of the Surface Pro is not at all as good as the battery life of the iPad Pro. The two-day conference is over. So what's the verdict then? Do I prefer taking notes in OneNote on the iPad Pro or on the Surface Pro? Well, as always, both sides have their pros and cons. So the benefits of the iPad Pro is that it's so dependable. It's easy to use, and I find the writing experience be more comfortable, so your handwriting becomes neater. You can take really high quality photos and insert into your notes, and the battery life is phenomenal. A downside is that even though the pen charges really quickly, you do have to charge the battery, which can be quite annoying if you just want to quickly jot something down and the pen is out of battery. Having to go back to the draw tab every time you want to write something is also quite annoying. Finally, there are some missing features in the OneNote app for iOS that I, at least as a power user, want. The benefit of the Surface device is that it is a full-blown computer. So at a conference like this, you don't have to worry about carrying around two devices if you need to work and take notes at the same time. The pen instantly works, and you can easily switch between writing and racing. The OneNote for Windows app has more functionality than the iOS version, and also you can use the rich desktop version OneNote 2016 if you want to get even more advanced. The downsides are the low-quality photos, the inferior battery life, and that your note-taking is sometimes interrupted because your device acts as a typical computer, but you have to restart for some unidentifiable reason.
So what's my final recommendation? Well, I would say that if you already have a computer and you're just looking for a device for note-taking, then I recommend the iPad Pro. You might object that it's a very expensive replacement for pen and paper, but you can really increase your productivity with this device, not just for note-taking, but you can do so much else with this device. It's a really comfortable note-taking experience and you'll be happy with your notes. This is especially good if you're new at taking handwritten digital notes. If you're looking for a device that you can use as both your work computer as well as a note-taking device, then I would recommend the Surface Pro. It's a really nice device and you have everything that you need in one. Well, that pretty much sums it up. I'd love to hear what you think about it, so please add your comments below and ask questions and get in touch. And don't forget to subscribe to see more of our upcoming videos. Thank you, bye!